welcome back. No, uh, no absence today. It's uh, early in the morning, and I'm actually uh, uh, just about ready to head over to uh, get the trench inspected. Apparently, that's what your public utilities do now: they inspect trenches instead of actually uh, uh, doing any of the doing any of the work. Um, that's that kind of brings us to the to the topic of this particular video. Um, a lot of folks have been following along with the Energy Sovereignty Project. We appreciate that. The uh, um, what's going on now is we're we're getting ready to do the actual install. Our install should take place around the on the week of the tenth at some point. I don't know how long it's going to take to uh, uh, to get the uh, approvals to actually turn the system on after it's installed. But we'll walk you through all of that as well as it unfolds. But uh, to bring everybody up to speed, that it, maybe this is your first time, your first video uh, uh, on this. The utility company, because we are producing power and storing power for consumption at the home, up to a certain point, the utility company has no issue with it because you're not in competition with them, basically. But what has happened now is that we are actually producing enough power that I think they start wondering about uh, uh, what happens if every home does this maybe I, I don't really I don't really know what the um, uh, other rationale is but the excuse that they use is that the tie if you're going to produce um, uh, enough power to run a home that when you couple that to their end that that coupling for whatever reason needs to handle double the, the amount of, of current even though it will never see that so uh, for those professionals that are, are watching this um, we had two proposals that involved having the public utility go through a 12 kilowatt inverter which would basically isolate the uh, uh, isolate the system, the utility side, the home side. Utility was having nothing of it. So, what they forced us to do was, instead of a 200 amp connection, they demanded a 400 amp connection. Why? Well, because there was 200 amps coming to the home from the public utility, and then the home was actually able to supply all of its needs, 200 amps. And where the two met, they then insisted, well, that has to carry double the current. Why that is exactly was never quite explained, at least not adequately to, uh, uh, to me. I felt that they could have tied both of those uh, uh, services together, 200 amps in one direction, 200 amps in the other direction, but hey, what do I know? So uh, if you're getting the feeling that we're beating up on the public utilities a little bit here, we are, because here, let's take a look at the, the videos here, right? So I'm going to patch in through the magic of editing. Hey, take a look at this. Now, does this look like a solar installation to you? Does this look like anything that's sustainable if every one of your neighbors is going to have to go through this? It certainly doesn't, certainly doesn't look to me like it's going to be anything that will uh, spur on mass adoption. What it looks to me like is the public utility absolutely refusing to allow people to install battery power to power their home. Now, <clears throat> for those following the Energy Sovereignty Project, we intend to show that you can power an average size home, again, depending on your area, if you have solar, we'll go over all of those numbers too. What's your threshold? How much power do you actually need to produce to maintain a home over the year. We're actually going to be showing you the exact numbers. <clears throat> You're actually going to see a house run on batteries. And we'll go through how much solar power needs to be produced and all of that. So back to what I was saying before, the Energy Sovereignty Project is going to show that you can run an average size home on a dryer plug. So with that said, tell me please why I have to have a 400 amp service. And not me, imagine every home 
that wants to install batteries has to install a 400 amp service because they want you to double up the service. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. So um, <clears throat> I'm designing uh, with uh, uh, some some partners uh, in uh, Livermore, California. We'll go into that in some future episodes. Um, I'm designing a way to help the consumers with that, make sure that they don't have to go through any of this ever again. Uh, there's not much I can talk about right now. We're still in the development phase. I'll let you guys know more when uh, when we're ready to release. But the bottom line is, is that there is no way that either California or the federal numbers of solar adoption is going to be met if they insist on this kind of nonsense that you're seeing here with upgrading every service to 400 amps even though that home will never draw more than 20 kilowatts it's, it's ridiculous it's ridiculous so anyway with that said uh i hope uh, uh, you guys will follow along again the um, installation date is uh, set for the week of the 10th uh so we're going to start filming uh, uh on that time period and so look for the first updates of the actual install sometime shortly thereafter maybe the 13th 14th 15th somewhere there uh, after it depends on how long it takes us to uh, uh, put some of the videos together but we want to get them out quick everybody's been waiting a long time to uh, see the start of the energy sovereignty project we have too nobody's more excited to get this thing uh, rolling to, than we are <clears throat> so uh, uh, again Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll keep you posted.